We're going to be looking at 22 players you can pick up off waivers for week 14. We're looking at quarterbacks, running backs, wide receivers, and tight ends. Players that can help you get into the playoffs, help you build the back end of your roster, and help you win your league. But what you need to do right now is click that subscribe button. Tap it with the finger on your phone, click it with the mouse on the computer, whatever you need to do to get the job done because the waiver wire is running hot this week. There's a lot of injuries, a lot of players to pick up off waivers, and I'm going to be running the waiver wire pretty hot on the channel, and we do this every week. I'm going to help you set your lineups later this week, and then over the summer, I'm going to help you do your research for draft season as you start doing your fantasy drafts click that button stop missing out you're going to need to pay attention to all 22 players one i got an easter egg in this video that you need to see because i think it's funny and then also i got some under the radar gems that you need to look at but starting things off we're going pretty basic here jordan love has been hot he's rostered in 60 percent of leagues in espn Kind of a high roster rate. Usually you want to talk about players who are rostering 50% or less in leagues. However, that means not many people are talking about him. And the thing is, he's running hot. There's 40% of leagues out there that's not rostering him. That means if 1,000 people watch this video, there's 400 people out there with Jordan Love on the waiver wire. He's a good get to play the matchups with. He's been hot lately. He's got three good wide receivers Take a look at him if you're hurting at the quarterback position, if he's still there. However, Ezekiel Elliott is on the come up here, and unfortunately, Ramadre Stevenson's dealing with an injury. He's going to be out for a good bit. With Stevenson out, and during that game last week, 64.7% opportunity share and saw 21 touches. Very good indicator, as we already knew if this was going to happen, that Ezekiel Elliott was going to get a lot of workload. He's, he's a very dependable running back, good in pass protection, runs the place correctly, can run it between the tackles, good on the goal line. He's going to get opportunities. And sometimes you just got to chase the touches at the running back position if you're hurting at running back and see what happens. That's what you're going to get with Ezekiel Elliott. He's probably going to score you enough to get you by every week. Romeo Dove. Speaking of Jordan Love here, last four games, he's seen five targets a game, 14.3% target share. But the air yards is really helping him out there. He's seen about 75 air yards per game, 11.6 PPR points per game in his last four. He's been solid, a little bit volatile in the start of the season, but he's been pretty consistent for a waiver wire wide receiver, a guy to pick up because he can deliver splash weeks, and he's also on the low, scoring enough to get you by with a few low games here and there. And then looking at the schedule, week 15, we got Tampa Bay. We got the Giants in week 14, Carolina in 16, Minnesota in week 17. You can't get a better schedule than that, really. You need to pick him up and use him to play the matchups for the rest of the year because he's got a good matchup every game for the rest of the year and in through the fantasy playoffs. Isaiah likely is on the come up due to the Mark Andrews injury. A lot of you guys should have picked him up. But he's still floating on waivers due to having a bye week after his first game as the starter. But in that first game, he saw six targets and almost a 75% snap share. So that's something you want to pay attention to. He's running more routes. He's seeing more snaps. He's seeing more opportunities on a team that likes to target the tight end. We've seen that historically, although it's Mark Andrews likely can be fantasy relevant too. So he's a player you may want to play the matchups with if you're hurting at tight end. However, I do not like rostering more than one tight end in basic tight end formats when it's not tight end premium. That being said, if you're good at the tight end position, you may want to look at stacking up at running back and wide receiver. Matthew Stafford, to surprise, is rostering just 31.9% of leagues. I didn't realize that or I'd talk about him a little bit more, but he's pretty dependable, especially now he's got Kyron Williams back. Puka Nakua has been hitting and has been pretty solid. Looking at the schedule here, you got the Giants in Week 17. That could be a game that allows you to get over the hump. We got the Saints. That could be a battle matchup where both teams got to score. And then you got Washington in Week 15. Good luck in Week 14. However, he'll probably score enough to get you by. But Matthew Stafford's a good quarterback to get off the waiver wire if you're hurting there. And then going to Keaton Mitchell. 
He's back. He's back from the bye week. He has been very consistent. He is that home run threat that's very exhilarating. You do not get that much at the running back position. But Keaton Mitchell is the RB20 in his last four games. That's how he's been scoring. 34 touches in his last four games, 10 touches per game. Now he's coming out of the bye, and that means this team might be scheming him up a little bit more because they see his home run capabilities like we see as well, and they also want to swing for the fences a little bit more as well. Noah Brown, we're looking at him again because Tank Dell, you know what? Out for the season. We don't like that. We got a lot of Tank Dell fans out there, including me. He ran hot between weeks 9 and 10. Noah Brown was a hot fancy commodity before he got injured. Came back last week. It was a little slow, but you know what? We got to ramp things up. Dell's out. The target's got to go somewhere. The matchups here are a little bit up and down. However, you got two pass funnel matchups against Tennessee going forward. You're going to want Texans wide receivers in those matchups. And you know what? The volume of the Texans in these Jets and Browns matchups could be enough to push the pace to get these wide receivers over the hump anyways. So you're looking at Noah Brown as a get because the opportunity is immense. And talking about Texans pass catchers, watch Dalton Schultz because he's been dealing with a hamstring injury, but Brevin Jordan was the next man up there. Scored 9.4 PPR fantasy points, was in on 75% of the snaps with Schultz out. Brevin Jordan. Back in the day at Miami, he was considered one of the top tight ends in college football. It was argued between him and Kyle Pitts. He's a talented tight end. He's dealt with injuries throughout his career that brought in Schultz. And you know what? If given the opportunity with C.J. Stroud, anybody running routes can get it on any given Sunday. Be on the lookout for this situation. Gardner, Minshew. I mean, just look at him. Just look at him. He's been hot as of late. 22 fantasy points against the Titans. And you know what? We got Cincinnati coming up. That's going to be a weird game script to look at with the quarterback play there. We got Pittsburgh. We got Atlanta, which could be a little slower. Then we finish off with the Raiders. If you're really hurting at quarterback and the names that we previously mentioned aren't there, he's good enough to get you by. He's a guy that can give you a little bit of upside. But when he scores in the QB2 range, he's not too far off from landing in that QB1 territory. So he's going to help you stay afloat. And I like some of these matchups going forward. Good enough to get the job done for the rest of the season. Kenneth Gainwell, top tier handcuff. DeAndre Swift exited his week 13 matchup against the 49ers with an injury with a couple plays left. It's deemed not serious. But again, with his injury history... You need to pay attention to what's going on with these Eagles because if something happens to Swift, you're going to want Gainwell because you're going to want any starting running back on this team because they moved the chains. They're going to give you opportunities, and you're going to want those touches considering he's going to be getting good opportunities in this offense. Elijah Moore has been doing some things over these last few weeks. 22.9% target share in his last four games, almost nine targets per game, and he's doing it with jabroni quarterbacks. The jabroni quarterbacks like Elijah Moore, unlike the jabroni quarterbacks from the Jets, and he's got a redemption game against the Jets Week 17. I don't advise starting him, but if you need a narrative in your championship matchup, knock yourself out. But we do have the Texans on the schedule. The Jaguars in Week 14, Who knows what their game scripts are going to look like going forward. But Elijah Moore has been productive. Week 10, 15 fantasy points. Week 11, 12. Week 12, 11. Week 13, 12.3. So he has been somewhat consistent over these last four weeks. A player you want to look at off the waiver wire. If you're still hurting at tight end, Gerald Everett's always going to be in the running for some opportunities here. The Chargers offense can push the pace. We had the Broncos twice on the schedule. We also have the Raiders. And then we do not know what this Bills matchup is going to be in Week 16. So overall, a decent schedule going forward, which could ignite some fantasy production. A guy to look at to play in your matchups going forward. And now looking at Antonio Gibson, Brian Robinson, Hurting with a hamstring. Got to pay attention to him, but we got a week 14 bye. However, he's getting five targets per game. He's got top-tier athleticism with 90th percentile size adjusted speed. That being said, if Robinson is out for 
a good bit of time. Then you're going to be looking at Antonio Gibson as a prime pickup. And you may want him stashed anyways, just in case something happens to Robinson that's much worse in the future. That way you got Gibson for the playoffs. And on top of that, if you're looking at a handcuffed back, he's used a lot in the passing game. He could be fantasy relevant on his own. Rashid Shahid's eventually going to be coming back. You're going to want him, especially for Week 17. You're going to want to pick him up at least by then because that's a prominent matchup for him down the road because teams want to throw it on Tampa Bay Buccaneers. We say this every single week. Look at last week. Jonathan Mingo scored 12 fantasy points. The week before that, we had someone else break out. And the week before that, someone else breaks out. That's just how it does against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Rashid Shahid gets air yards. He is a wide receiver that is very up and down. He is a roller coaster wide receiver, but when he scores, it's in those past funnel matchups. Look against Tennessee. Look against Indiana. We also got Carolina on the docket. We got the Giants. So we got some prominent matchups. You got to pay attention to his health. You got to pay attention to the news. But I'd rather be early telling you right now before everybody else starts jumping on him for that Week 17 matchup. Michael Mayer, and look at it, it's Wreck-It Ralph himself. Look at the picture here, then look at Wreck-It Ralph. Look again, look back and forth, it's the same dude. Tell me there's a difference here because there's not. But he's averaging 4.7 targets per game and a 14.7% target share over his last four games. We have a decent schedule coming up. We got Minnesota this week, we got the Chargers. The Chiefs is a little dicey, believe it or not. We also got the Colts, but still the volume starting to crank up here. And we got a rookie towards the back nine of the season. Something you want to pay attention to if you're hurting at the tight end spot. If you're in a 12-team league, I hope you don't have to dig in this deep. However, you might have to and play the matchups here in some of these weeks. So take a look at Wreck-It Ralph, a.k.a. Michael Mayer. Tajay Spears is a hot handcuff. We got a taste of that a few days ago when Derrick Henry went out with that concussion he's now officially out of the concussion protocol but you got a taste of what the market's saying you got a taste of what social media says what other fantasy analyst says on their articles and in the news people want Tajay Spears as the lead back in this offense for their fantasy team so if you want to gobble up this handcuff right now go ahead and do so because if something happens to Derrick Henry or he goes back in concussion protocol Who knows what happens? You already got Tajay Spears. You don't have to fight anybody off the waiver wire for him. Demario Douglas here. Nine targets a game. Almost a 30% target share in his last four games. But has an 8 out of 5.2. That is preventing him from breaking out. But even with that, he's still scoring enough to get you a bye. Week 7, 11 fantasy points. Week 8, 7. Week 9, 10. Week 10 against the Colts, 14. Week 12 against the Giants, 10.9. Then we had the concussion. I think he's still in concussion protocol, at least being held out of practice. Pay attention to the news. I don't think the matchups matter this much for him because the quarterback situation here with the Patriots is awful. It's nasty. However, he's been soaking up targets. A guy getting this many targets with this high of a target share, you know you can get him off waivers and feel okay about it. Chase Brown is starting to cuff up here behind Mixon. He's starting to get some work, some opportunities. He saw nine touches on Monday night. Started off in this game working intermittently with Mixon, getting some opportunities and some snaps. It looked like he was going to get a boatload more snaps, but things dialed back a little bit. You need to pay attention to him. If I'm in a 16-teamer, I'm getting Chase right now. If I'm in a deeper league, I'm just getting him, especially if I have Mixon. If I'm in a 12-teamer, I'm watching from afar. I'm paying attention. If Mixon goes down and I'm in a 12-team league, I'm running to get Chase Brown. That's how I'm playing it. 12-teamer, ignore this, but watch from afar. 14, 16, 18, 20, you're paying attention to Chase Brown, if not picking him up. Jonathan Mingo is a surprise rookie. Nobody's really talking about him. Last four games, 7.3% targets per game 26.4 percent target share 70 air yards per game so he's getting targets he's getting targeted downfield 
and he's starting to produce a little bit. 10 points against Tennessee, 13 points against Tampa Bay. Again, those are two pass funnel matchups, but still, Jonathan Mingo is getting some opportunities here. The schedule going forward is okay, but he's also getting targets, and that's what you want off the waiver wire anyways. A wide receiver who's on the come up, getting targets and air yards. So good luck with that pick, but if you got to make it, you got to make it. But at least you know you're picking up a wide receiver who's young with athleticism, who's starting to get targeted more in this offense. Roshan Johnson's back here in another waiver wire video. His snaps are increasing. His workload's increasing. His last game he scored 12 and a half fantasy points against the Minnesota Vikings. That could be a trend going forward. We see that happen with rookies a lot in the back end of the season. Watch out for Deonta Foreman if he comes back from injury. But still, if you want to pick up Roshan Johnson as a hope and prayer, go ahead and do so because he is getting workload. He's getting opportunities, and you want to see what happens with that. Of course, I'm going to talk about Parker Washington. Of course, I'm going to bring him up. Christian Kirk is out, having surgery, going to be out for eight weeks, so the rest of the season, he's not coming back. Parker Washington ran 80% of his snaps in the slot, of course, because that's baked into his collegiate profile. We talked about that extensively in the offseason. That's why you need to hit that subscribe button. That way, when guys like Parker Washington hit... You already know about them. You know who they are because we talk about rookies like this for months on end in the offseason. You get the profiles. You get to know who these players are. You get a good feel of what they can do on the field. That way, when I start talking about these players, you know where I'm coming from because I've studied these players all offseason long. And then you just watch me intermittently talk about them. And you get that information, and then when Parker Washington scores you 18.1 PPR fantasy points, you get the understanding of what he can do on the field, and it doesn't surprise you. He's going to see more snaps. He's going to see more routes. One, he earned it. Christian Kirk's out. We do have some prominent matchups. We do have some scary matchups. Tampa Bay, Carolina, we do not know what's going on at the quarterback position. But I look for him to get more workload nonetheless. After that, he's still a little bit of a lottery ticket. Odell Beckham Jr. And I'm kind of excited about him because he's starting to heat up a little bit. Fantasy production, week 9 against Seattle, 14.6 PPR fantasy points. Week 10 is 11 against the Browns. Week 11, 15 points against the Bengals. Week 12, 6.4 against the Chargers. But that game was a dud all the way around. He scored 11 PPR points per game in his last four. 4.7 targets a game. 18.4% target share. Pushing a 20% target share. But his ADOT, look at that, 15.5. He's getting targets downfield. That's going to grant some opportunities. There's some matchups where I probably won't be starting him here. But that Miami matchup, I'm going ham on Dolphins and Ravens. I'm already talking about that. I think Odell Beckham could be getting some opportunities in that matchup. Those are 12 players we're looking to pick up off waivers for week 14. Let me know who you're picking up this week. Is there a player I missed? There probably is because there's a lot of players out there. also did a couple other waiver wire videos, and I'm going to do a lot more throughout the next few days. So be on the lookout for that because I'm going deep on the waiver wire this week, especially since we had a lot of injuries in week 13. I want to make sure the bases are covered as we roll into this slate of matchups here to get us into the playoffs, if not get you through the playoffs. I want to thank you for watching, though. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Rick Flair's watching. Do not disappoint him. It's the holidays. I want to thank you for watching, though. Catch you on the next video.